Hello, Daisies from Troop 46990. How are you all doing? It has been a really long time since we have seen each other for a meeting. How was your spring break? How is the distance learning going? We only have, what, two and a half, three weeks left of school? Nice. So, in these pre tutorials, we will be working on three badges. They are all about cybersecurity. We'll be working on cybersecurity basics, cybersecurity safeguards, and cybersecurity investigator. So I have sent you guys each a packet to your house. Included are going to be three folders, one for badge one, one for badge two, one for badge three. They each have some worksheets and information in them. And then also in your bag, you will have a box, some fabric, some wrapping paper, and string. So that's going to be for the first badge. That's going to be for activity for step number two in the first batch. So just to give you guys a heads up, and now we are going to start our meeting or our tutorial. But first things first, as we start our, all things, let us start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Girl Scout promise. So, make sure you hold up your Girl Scout sign. We make our Girl Scout sign with our right hand by using our thumb to hold down our little finger, leaving the three middle fingers extended to represent the three parts of the promise. You ready? follow along. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. The Girl Scout law. Keep your Girl Scout sign up and follow along. Read the words as they appear. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Good job, everybody. You ready to move on to the badge? Let's go. Cyber Security Basics. When we have earned this badge at the end of this tutorial, we will know how computers work and how to stay safe online. Introduction to Cybersecurity Computers are machines. They are made up of different parts that work together to allow you to look at pictures, play games, watch movies, and send messages. Computers can connect to other computers all over the world. Computers are fun to explore with, but you need to know how to be safe while you do it. For this badge, we will explore how computers work, how to protect something valuable, and discover how we are connected, just like computers. You ready? Onward. Spot the computer. We're going to find out how computers work in step one. So find out about the parts of a computer and how they help you connect to the internet, watch videos, send messages, and more. Computers come in different shapes and sizes. On the next slide, we are going to play a game. You ready? So, we are going to see which of these are computers and which are not. Here we go. Can you tell which of these are, is a computer? It can be more than one. What do you think? You ready for the answer? Okay, here it goes. Three, two, one. One, they are all computers. All six of them were computers. The desktop, the laptop, the smartphone, the video game display, the video game console were all computers. So, little to bit. The first computers were so big that just one would fill up a whole room. They were mostly used to help people with numbers. Now you can hold a computer in our hand. A smartphone is a pocket-sized computer. 
You can do a lot more with today's computers. You can take pictures, make movies, mix music, write stories, send messages, play games, and watch videos. So we're going to meet our computer. You ready? We're going to find out what each part does. So here are the parts that we are going to be looking at. The monitor, the webcam, the speakers, the CPU, the keyboard, mouse, and printer. The monitor. The monitor is the screen that shows you pictures and words. You are currently looking at the screen to see this video or presentation. What kind of monitor do you have? Can you point to your monitor? Does every monitor look the same? The monitor on a laptop might not be the same size as the one on a desktop. The one on the smartphone might not be the one that's the same on the video game console. What do you guys think? Mom. Nice. Okay, onward. A webcam. A webcam is a digital camera that can take and send photos. We use webcams when we participate in meetings for school online. We use cams to record ourselves in videos to send to people, such as what we participated in during the digital cookie workshop at the Girl Scout Council. Webcams are all, just like monitors, are different depending on the device you have. On laptops, most of them are built in into the bezel of the laptop. The camera on the back or front of the smartphone or tablet can also act as webcams when you do video calls. And you can get an attached webcam to go on a desktop so that people can see you and you can see them. Speakers. Speakers are tools that help you hear sound from your computer. Speakers come in various formats, such as traditional box speakers on a desktop, built-in speakers on a laptop or a new monitor, a headset, or little headphones. What kind of speakers do you guys have? What do you use most? I'm currently using a headset. It has a built-in microphone and I get a hear sound that comes out. The CPU. The CPU is the computer's brain. It tells the other parts what to do. The CPU is a chip inside a phone or a laptop. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. What else contains the CPU? What else do you think needs to store stuff? What about a camera? A digital camera? The keyboard. The keyboard is a part of the, that lets you type messages. There are multiple different kinds of keyboards. I have four pictures near us. We have one that needs to be plugged in. And we have a wireless one that uses a dongle over here. Do it in purple. So we have a dongle right here for a wireless keyboard. Wireless. Not very good at writing. Then we have a laptop right here. See how it's built into it? And then this was the desktop that needed to be plugged in. What kind of computer do you, keyboard do you guys have? The mouse. The mouse is the part that lets you move around on the computer. You see the, do you see the cursor or hand on the screen? Currently have a purple dot. Do you see when I move it? Do, do, do. That is my cursor. The mouse, I control my cursor with the mouse. What uses a mouse? Do all computers a mouse? What about a laptop? What do you use instead of a mouse? So on laptops, they have something called a touchpad. You can hook up a mouse to the laptop, yes, but there is a touchpad. And then what about on your smartphone or your tablet? 
or your video game console. You use your fingers, don't you? Exactly. So, not everything uses a mouse. You can use your finger as your mouse to move the cursor, or it can be a touch screen. You might not need a mouse, but you use your finger to click on objects, right? The printer. The printer is the machine that connects to your computer. It lets you print words and pictures. So, the one picture it is very similar to the printer that I have and have been printing all of your stuff on. What kind of printer do you guys have? Now we're going to be moving on to step two, protecting valuables. When you protect something, you keep it safe. So we're going to be talking about layers of safety in an upcoming video that was put on by the Girl Scouts of Central Washington. And they're going to explain a lot and they're actually going to be doing your activity with you. And they have all the details for it. So I'm going to give you a quick scenario just so you have an idea in your head about layers of safety. Imagine that you have been given a magic pebble it can give you anything you wish for. Only you and your parents know about this pebble, but people you don't know may find out about it. They may want to take it away from you. What can you do to keep your pebble safe? You can put layers of protection around it. You can put the pebble in a special box. You could lock the box with a key, and then you can even hide the box under your bed. When you use a computer, you do the same thing you create layers of protection to keep it safe. For example, do you log on to your computer or tablet to use it? Putting in a password is one layer of protection. So some key words to know for coming up are protect, to keep from getting hurt or lost, safety, to be free from harm or danger, identity, who a person is, and communicate, sharing something with another person or a group of people. In your packet, you should have a small box, some paper, maybe some fabric, some string. What you're going to need to grab are some markers, some crayons, some tape, some glue, maybe a stapler with staples, anything else you want to put on. So in the box, you should have a treasure. Take a peek and see what you have. So, we are going to watch a video from the Girl Scouts of Central Maryland, and after the video, you guys can make a treasure map and go hide it, and then tomorrow, see how well you did your layers of safety. Are you ready to watch the video? If you're not, just pause the video and then come back. Here we go. Hi, my name is Mrs. Prominence, and I work with the Girl Scouts of Central Maryland. Um, for those of you that don't know where Central Maryland might be located, it is on the eastern shore of the United States, more specifically just right by Washington, D.C., and you can see it on the map right there. Um, at the Girl Scouts of Central Maryland, I am the STEM specialist, so I get to do programs and activities with girls that relate to STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. And today, I am going to be helping our daisies do part of our cybersecurity basics badge. And we're going to learn all about how to keep information safe on the computer by using layers of protection. Um, so just like when you are leaving your house, you or your parents are going to lock the door. If I'm going to go out into the sun, I'm going to make sure that I have sunscreen on to add layers of protection. So when we're thinking about our devices, our computers, or our phones, or anything like that, we want to make sure that we have a lot of layers of security and protection to keep our information that's stored on those devices safe. So for our activity today, we are going to be protecting a treasure of ours. So what we're going to need is we're going to need to find a treasure. Um, we're going to need a box that our treasure is going to fit into. Some things to decorate that box with, maybe paint, markers, crayons, pencils, stickers. Um, we're going, and then we're going to need things to protect that. 
So some things that you might use to protect your treasury box might be wrapping paper, bubble wrap, maybe some fabric, um, anything that'll help protect it, string, tape, and what we're going to do with these materials is we're going to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've created and what treasure I'm going to be protecting. So I went and I was thinking about something that was really special and important to me, just like you girls should do. And I have a hockey puck that my grandparents gave me that is just so very special to me. And I want to keep it nice and safe. And I then found a box that my treasure will fit into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my treasure in my box. Nice and safe. All right, so my treasure is now in my box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate my box. So we want our treasure to be special and decorated. So I'm going to write Megan. Megan's treasure on this. And then we can go ahead and continue to decorate this however you like. It does not matter how you decorate it as long as it's special to you. So I'm going to do some blue and kind of color it a little bit and decorate my box. And you can use whatever kind of craft materials that you have for this creation. So decorate mine just a little bit. And then I'll show you how I'm going to protect this treasure of mine. All right. So as you're decorating your box, you want to try and think about what you're going to do to protect your treasure. So when I'm on the computer, I make sure that I protect my information by not saying anything that wouldn't be safe to share. I don't tell anybody my information or where I live online and I also make sure that I'm using passwords and I'm only using websites that are safe. Um, so now that I have my treasure and I decorated my box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add different layers of protection for this treasure because I don't want my honky puck that's in here to be nice and safe. So I'm going to wrap it with a couple different things. So I have some felt paper it's nice and soft that I think will do a really good job of protecting my treasure. And I'm going to wrap it and I'm going to use some tape. And we are going to wrap and protect our box. And I'm going to tape it on. Just like this. And you don't have to use uh, what I'm using. You can use whatever you have to try and keep your treasure safe. this layer of protection, I'm thinking I might want to do something else to keep it nice and safe because it's always safe to have multiple layers of protection and different layers of security. So I'm going to also use some packing paper to cover this once more. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover my box with this packing paper to keep it nice and tape. And I'm going to again tape it. You can use tape, you can use string, whatever you think is best to keep your treasure safe. So I'm going to put a little piece of tape on it and I'm also going to add some string so that it does not come apart and it's really hard for somebody to get to my treasure box. your treasure you want to think how you're going to keep that safe what you're going to use to keep that safe and maybe why you're keeping that safe i'm keeping my hockey puck safe because it's something that's very special to me my grandparents gave it to me and i've had it for a very long time and i want it to stay nice and safe and just like all of my information on the internet i want to protect it with as many layers of security as i can so think about your treasure Think about how you're going to protect it. And also, as you're protecting your treasure, think about how you're protecting your information online when you're using the computer.
and then using any of your devices. So if you had fun doing this activity with me today, you can check out girlscouts.org to see some more really fun daily activities that you can do. And if you're not already a Girl Scout, you can reach out to your local Girl Scout council to learn about becoming a Girl Scout, or if your parents want to become a Girl Scout leader, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, thank you for learning about protecting your information uh, with me, and I hope happy Girl Scouting. You are connected. How are you connected? What are ways you can be connected? You are connected. You spend time with and talk to your friends and family most of the time, daily, right? Computers are connected too. A group of computers that are all connected is called a network. People can send messages to other people over networks. So this is a very small picture of like a network how computers connect people. A little bit more about a network. So have you been in a different city or wanted to talk to somebody in a different city? Or have you been in a big room and a lot of people there, you guys just wanna share information really quick. You're on a network where you can send information and receive it via video, instant messaging, text message, email, But uh, the internet is something that is a network as well that can give you access from anywhere in the world depending on what companies and people put up there. Internet is where companies and individuals host the data and you can access it from your computer. We can communicate faster and more cost effectively in our economy. Technology allows us to easily connect with people worldwide using our choice of forum we no longer need to wait for a stamped letter to travel miles in the mail. We do for packages and stuff like that. How do we communicate? Communicate is a big word for telling somebody something. There are a lot of ways you do this. You can talk to them in person and face to face over the phone or over the computer. Have you talked to a person face to face? Like maybe at the Girl Scout meetings, we were all face to face. Have you talked to people over the telephone? Have we called somebody? Say, hey, how are you guys doing? Or have you talked to them over a computer? What do you guys do the most? What do you prefer to do? You can also send message by texting on a cell phone, emailing through your computer, or posting a picture or a message online. Have you noticed your parents communicating this way? By text messages on the cell phone, emailing, or just sharing information on various platforms on the computer. They are communicating and so are you. Guess what? You have finished the Cybersecurity Basics Badge. So, because you have finished the badge, there are some ways that you can give service and that you can give service by telling your friends and family what you learned about how computer parts work together. Show your friends and family how we are connected in person and through computers. Share what you learned about safety and protection with your friends or family. You maybe have your family go with you on your treasure hunt to find your treasure. Bye everybody. I will be doing the next one shortly.